but in reality people steal data or do things not because of exploits downloaded from the internet, they steal them because of the permissions are so weak in databases, because data is just lying around everywhere. We as uh, customers of Oracle who build Oracle databases, we tend to not think about security when we deploy the application, we leave the data lying around, we often duplicate it in massive quantities. So that's really sort of summarized the definition of we need security and we're talking about the key issue for me which is the security of the data. Uh, we'll now go and talk about the traditional approach. Most people for the last few years when they think about database security, if they've done something about database security, they basically do some hardening based on a checklist. In the UK, certainly, and across Europe, most databases don't have much work done on them in terms of data security. There are a number of checklists out there. There's the SAN step-by-step, -step, the SAN score, the CIS benchmark, the DOD STIG. Most of them have got similar levels of checks and fixes and tips and so on in them. You know, uh, people follow them generally over this side of the pond. We don't follow them very far on the US side of the pond. I tend to see databases that have been following these lists to a much more depth, and that's generally because you've got more regulation over there, so things like SOX and HIPAA and so on. But is hardening a database by a checklist, is it a good idea? Obviously, you can't respond to me, so I'll answer it myself. Um, in my view, no, and the reason is that not many checklists exist most of them are very similar, they come from a, a similar sort of source, uh, they've got similar sorts of content, but that isn't the main issue. Most of them are tip based. We could relate this to the tuning world of the Oracle database. You know, people who've done any tuning in Oracle database have heard of this um, phrase compulsive tuning disorder. So you go to a website, you find a tip that says set this parameter to, to this value, you know, application queries, the database runs a bit faster. You pick another tip, you set another parameter to a different value, the database runs a bit slower. Is it a combination of both tips that's causing it now to run slower? So you remove the second tip, you go and look for a third tip, and so on. These checklists are, are really of a similar ilk. They're really just tip-based. They're about basic hardening. These lists don't focus on securing the data. If we want to secure um, a database, we shouldn't think about securing the database software. We should think about securing the data. We have to know where the data is, we have to know who can access it, then we can think about securing it. These lists don't do that. The Center for Internet Security benchmark, for instance, the version 3, has something like 158, 154 pages, depending on how you've printed it out, whether you're using the page numbers from the PDF or the actual page numbers, it's really irrelevant. And, you know, each page has got a number of um, checks in it. Maybe there's three to four hundred checks in this document. If you follow that complete document from beginning to end and you apply all the advice to your complete uh, to one complete database, is your credit card data or your aid status or your banking details any more secure? No, it's not because these documents don't mention anything. This is a big problem. The second side of it is that solutions are a problem as well. Um, we could have a time-based solution or we could have a clever-based solution. I'll explain what this means in a second. Um, often most organizations don't have a dedicated database security person. Often there's a security team, maybe an internal security team in a big enough organization. They're going around and they're really focusing on desktop security, firewalls and so on. They don't generally have somebody from the DBA team involved. You know, if you want to secure your databases, you have to think about money. You have to think about finance. You have to put forward some man days, man years to actually think about securing your database. This is a problem. Uh, securing a database costs a lot of money if you take the approach of following a checklist. Imagine a checklist with 400 checks in it. Imagine you've got 100 databases. You know, that's what, 40,000 things you have to fix. You're talking about man years of work to uh, diligently go through all of those databases and do all of that fixing. The problem is, as I've just explained, <laughs> it doesn't say anything about your data. So your data is probably still just as insecure as it was at the beginning. You brought up the level of uh, basic hardening, but you haven't secured the actual data. The second part of this is that uh, often solutions are not as easy as you think they are because um, solutions often need correlating uh, evidence and facts and 
things work in tandem, they work differently based on different versions of Oracle, they work differently based on different um, operating systems, they work differently based on the fact you've got different applications and so on. So one solution for one particular problem in one database might not be the solution in another one. So you have that complexity as well. So generally in the database world, we have to accept that we can't fix 400 things in every database. We need clever solutions. So the time really transfers to the clever part, and we really say that if you know we have to start off with how much time have we got to do this? We have one person for a year, or one person full time. Maybe in a year we want to achieve a certain level of security. Then that person needs to start coming up with clever ba clever solutions. So we need to put wrappers around the data. We need to have uh, an onion-based approach. We need to put security around the data at its source. We need to put security around access to the database in terms of. Uh, people being able to connect, we need to put security in terms of understanding who is connecting and what they're doing. Mm -hmm.